Our jazz club, The Basement, is celebrating 40 years. We have Don Griffith with us today. Uh, Don, thanks for taking some time out of that busy schedule with your new uh, publication you have here. Well, Randy, it's, uh, I needed a break anyway, so I'm glad to be here. Come on down. Uh, I want to talk a bit about the anniversary, 40 years, uh, successful uh, in its own right and growing. Uh, quite a professional publication, I might add, with the years I've been going. Uh, great to see. What, uh, what can you tell us about the club? It's made it through COVID and it sounds like it's growing. Yeah, you know, um, of course, nobody really knew what was going to happen. Sure. And uh, we had 2,400 members just pre-COVID. Uh, and all those people kept their memberships, as far as I could tell. And uh, once once we we got out of the pandemic and basically uh, opened up uh, with full capacity, we started attracting more members. And it seems like people are really uh, getting into the live music. We're up to three thousand eight hundred and eighty members right now, heading towards four thousand. So that's really a, I mean, it's it's unbelievable the support we've had in the community. Saskatoon is a is a hot spot and a hotbed for not just appreciating music, but for musicians like yourself. Uh, and, and growing up here, I know that it's always been a good part of the culture that that we enjoy. Uh, but where did the club start, and when did it move? And it, it's a membership based organization. Yeah. Uh, and, and what does it cost to belong? Yeah, well, the, cl the club, the actual Saskatoon Jazz Society began, uh, I think, April 1st, 1979. And they tried to present jazz uh, at various bars and, and uh, uh, establishments in the city. But eventually they got tired of that and said, we, we need an actual uh, a venue that we can, we can have and call our own. And so they opened uh, on December 11th, 1982 wow. at 245 3rd uh, Avenue South, the Glengarry Building, in the basement, of course. Uh, and that ended, um, I guess, the spring or, 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 or just early in 2008. For various reasons, it basically died. Uh, and then the club resurrected uh, in July of 2009 on its, at its current, uh, our, our current location in the old post office building on 4th Avenue North. So we've been there since, uh, I guess that's 13 or 14 years. Uh, it's been pretty good. Uh, we've got lots of members. And, uh, you know, one of the things about the membership is we make it so that it's easy to become a member. It's only $40 for a couple. Uh, and you save $10 a ticket uh, on, on most of our shows. So it really pays for itself. So it's not an exclusive club in the sense that, uh, you know, we only want certain people. We want everybody to be involved. Anybody who likes live music. Um, and you know, it's not only about the music, it's about, um, you know, you look around the room and you go, Gee, this is a nice place. This is, whoa, I like these people. Uh, you look around and you say, uh, I think I'd like to come back here. And that's, that's why people, you know, they like the music, but they also like the, uh, the ambiance of the room. So there's the concerts mm. that uh, are scheduled, but every Friday there's Piano Fridays that's kind of open to get a feel for the club? Yeah, yeah. Piano Fridays are no cover. We call them no cover Piano Fridays. And uh, we have about 15 piano players in the city that we alternate. And uh, it's a great way to, uh, you know, check out the place before actually putting down some money to get in. Matter of fact, you can just have water at Piano Fridays. Just show up and uh, just, the water's free and the, so is the music. And, uh, you know, the thing about Piano Fridays is, is once, once you're there, I think most people start thinking about, well, maybe I should come more often and maybe I'll actually buy a ticket. And so so that's, that's the point behind Piano Fridays is to get people in the door. And it's, a, it's an intimate venue. It's not a, a massive club like if it was in Costco, you'd get lost. But yeah. you're, I wouldn't say shoulder to shoulder, but yeah. there, there's a different uh, vibe there. Yeah, we, yeah. we basically uh, say our cap is uh, 180, although uh, the actual... Uh, a fire code is 262, but we'd have to remove all the tables and, yeah. and uh, you know, we wouldn't do that. So like 180 is, is, is basically what we say. And uh, actually the room feels real good at 90. At 90, everybody's got some room. And so it is an intimate uh, venue. And, uh, you know, the, the great thing about it is it sounds really good. It's not, it's not super loud. It's, uh, it's uh, really hi-fi, I would say. When you look at all of the uh, the acts that are coming, it's it's not a jazz club per se. It's about music yeah. in the bigger sense. Yeah. What uh, what have you got coming up 
uh, February to May, June of this year. Oh, well, we do have lots of jazz shows coming. And I, and I just want to make sure that, that people understand it is a jazz club in that uh, our mandate is to pre present, promote, and foster jazz. But the truth is that to, uh, to have 130 shows a year, uh, if we had jazz, 130 jazz shows a year, we'd, we'd close at the end of that year because the market isn't there. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we actually bankroll the jazz shows with the non-jazz shows, which are, are, you know, we have lots of shows that are, are more rocky, bluesy, uh, that are, I, I guess they're more popular, and, and uh, we, we sell out a lot of those shows. Uh, but uh, we, we definitely uh, have lots of jazz shows. We have, uh, in February, uh, we have... Um, Champion Fulton from New York. Uh, she's a great jazz uh, singer and piano player. Uh, we've got um, two uh, jazz, uh, a jazz trio and a jazz, sorry, a, a piano trio and a piano quartet in, in February. Two different bands from, from the East coming in. And so there's lots of jazz. Plus we have lots of local uh, groups that, that play. Um, um, Eileen Laverty is going to play. Jay and Joe are, are coming. Uh, B.C. Reed has a new uh, Crosby, Stills, Nast and Young uh, tribute band. Kashmir, which is a, a local uh, Led Zeppelin uh, tribute, is playing. Um, so, so lots of local. Uh, when touring acts come, uh, we, we definitely make an effort to, to, uh, to find a spot for them. But the truth is, without the locals, uh, we wouldn't be able to make it. And uh, the locals really do draw. And, uh, and it's great to, to have local musicians, a place for local musicians to play. I think that's one of the, the key successes that you as the artistic director have kind of woven that silver thread through the community yeah. and, and pulled and nurtured uh, some of the musicians and, and putting them on the same stage as New York and other uh, yeah. people attending here. Uh, we talked earlier off camera about the, the cover uh, with a, a banjo on the front, and considering that risque, but yeah, uh, yeah. the popularity of it, uh, both from, I guess, bluegrass and uh, some of the Dixie and other types of genres that would feature that, uh, what's happening in that field? Well, uh, the, the, the jazz, the, uh, this, this guy, uh, Don Vappi, is a jazz uh, ba banjo player, which I know some people, when they think of uh, banjo, they think of deliverance, right? Which uh, was great for the banjo, but also terrible for the banjo. So uh, Don Vappi is a jazz banjo player, and, and it actually exists, and, and he's quite, uh, quite an accomplished uh, musician. So he's playing on May 13th. And uh, Randy, you've got to get your tickets for that one. I think I might already have them uh, for my birthday, but I'm not <laughs> sure... Uh, the the quality of the acts, though. I mean, uh, Eileen Laverty, she's been there before, and yeah. always a big draw. Yeah. How do you try and find a balance, trying to appease different flavors and tastes across the community? That I like this, but I may not like that. But I may go and discover I like it. Yeah, yeah. Well, people do really have to do their research. So you, you can't just go there and assume that you're going to like it. Because we have a you know a wide variety of genres that we we present, um, like you know for example uh, last weekend we had country uh, with Jackie Guy and uh, it was quite successful. But I know that there are some people that say oh I don't want, I don't like country right so they so they shouldn't go to that. And then of course we have people who say I hate jazz so don't go to a jazz show. There's there's something I mean I hate to say it but there's really something for everybody. If you like live music. Uh, there must be something that we have at the basement that you would like. And as far as the venue itself, if I wanted to go there for some light snack food, uh, do you offer anything if people oh, yeah. came there yeah. after work? Yeah, we have Chef Lynn, who is uh, quite amazing. Um, I'd say that our nachos are the best nachos in the city. Uh, we have pizza. We have, um, uh, what are those things, charcuterie boards. So it's not fancy dining but it's uh, really a high quality locally sourced food and uh, like you wouldn't believe how many nacho chips we find on the floor at the end of a night like you know that the nachos are very popular. I want to ask you uh, just in terms of what the the future of the club holds I noticed uh, the sign on the outside that's uh, uh, very captivating com compared to what we came from. Uh, the, 40 years, what would you say 
you know, the, the next two or three years holds for the club and the music scene here as we come out of the, the pandemic and keep circulating? Well, I, I, I would say that uh, there's no reason why we just don't continue to keep on growing. I know we're going to hit 4,000 this year. I make that strong prediction. I thought we'd get to 3,500 by uh, Christmas and we were way past that. So we're at, uh, we're basically 120 from 4,000. So we're going to get there. And that's a number that, you know, it's astounding if you think of 4,000 people are members. And of course, some of them uh, are on automatic renewal, but there's a lot of them that aren't that make a choice. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll join again. And, uh, you know, 4,000 people, that's, that's a lot of people who have committed to uh, supporting live music. So I, I think our future for the next two or three years, it's, we have nothing to worry about. And is that membership, is it a calendar year or does it start from the, the day you buy yeah. it? And yeah, as soon as you buy your membership, you get one year. Okay. Yeah. I think uh, mine is up for renewal. That's if it right, hasn't Randy. been already, I'll pay you before you leave. But uh, Don, if, if people wanted to find out more about the club, how would they reach you or how would they find you uh, by phone, email, or Yeah, website? well, we have this thing called the website, oh, which, is, which is pretty good. It's on the internet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the big thing is just remember yeah. Basement. Uh, they made a really bad pun uh, 40 years ago and called it the basement as in B-A-S-S, -S, right? And, of course... The idea was the bass, bass, as in the bass guitar, I guess, or the double bass. And so they called it the basement. And uh, we still get people who call it the bassment. Uh, and I, you know, I understand, you know, the bass. Or, you know, uh, there is no fishing going on at, at the basement. But uh, if you just look, look up, just, uh, just Saskatoon basement, B-A-S-S-M-E-N-T, and you will get to our website, I'm sure. We'll see you at the club, Don. Uh, all the best on your 40th, and we'll have you back again. Thanks, Randy.